So this exhibition tries to set for the first time John Cage's career in its historical context. Uh, we begin with the 1930s through the 40s um, and his expansion of percussion music in the search of more new sounds, as he said. So the first galleries of the exhibition treat percussion and in every instance you can hear how he added new and unconventional uh, instruments to the field of percussion and then it, it shows his transformation of that kind of music to his grand invention, which is the prepared piano. Um, so this, this gallery here moves into the prepared piano. We see his preparations inside the piano. And all of these are, are things that mute the piano. So rather than this sort of grand, loud, ponderous sound, we have this muted, subtle, uh, prepared piano music and the, 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 the grand work of that is sonatas and interludes which is the score of which is behind the piano. Um, for, the, for the exhibition we will have someone performing this music. It's very important that you hear it as well as see but this may be also the first time that many people see what exactly is a prepared piano. <laughs> This section of the exhibition deals with Cage's two uh, sojourns at Black Mountain College. One was in 48 and the other in 1952. A very important figure that, who was also at Black Mountain at the time Cage was in the late 40s was Buckminster Fuller and he would have a lasting impact on Cage's thinking and on his life. Um, Fuller was working on this thing called the geodesic dome and this was all about sustainable living environments using the least material for the most effect, something that the bare minimum of materials for a structural effect um, to, to build a dome over the large, to cover the largest possible space with the least amount of materials. So these models are things that he had around him all the time at Black Mountain and it seems like the, the utopian vision in the space between model and architecture has something to do with the utopianism and the, the speculation and the experimentation between, for Cage, a score and a performance. Unlike any other score to performance relationship in the history of music before, for Cage there was a vast gap between the composer, the performer and the audience, which he widened exponentially by the time he came to what he called indeterminacy, which was a score that only set up many possibilities that could be realised in many different ways. So somehow Buckminster Fuller's model seemed to be this beautiful metaphor for trying to see something that you can't yet touch, which is what Cage did for his entire career. <laughs>